Here we are going to return back to federal politics now. We have seen today that protests, protesters rather, have been gathering on the lawns of Parliament House. They're protesting against the Adani coal mine. We learnt yesterday from the federal government it confirmed that it won't be funding that rail link to the Adani coal mine in Queensland. For more on this, we're joined live now by the Green Senator Andrew Bartlett. Uh, Senator, appreciate your time. Despite the government confirming that yesterday about the rail line, I spoke with Ian. McFarlane from the Resources Council in Queensland a bit earlier and he was saying that Adani is still committed to this project, that the project is viable and, and can go ahead without that loan for the rail line. Is that your understanding of the situation? Oh, I think Adani's viability is very dodgy, frankly, economically, let alone uh, anything else. And obviously it's going to have significant uh, negative impacts on uh, other jobs in regional Queensland. But, but uh, as we all know, there's an alternative rail line being proposed by Horizon, uh, which would also assist Adani. And they've got some sort of application before the National, uh, sorry, the Northern Australia Infrastructure Facility. Uh, we had uh, the strange scenario last week. I was at a Senate committee hearings in Cairns where the Queensland government didn't turn up to the hearing. Um, to put their side of the uh, story, but uh, they are attacking uh, NAIF, the, the infrastructure facility, for putting out false information about Horizon's uh, application for rail funding. Or, uh, NAIF was there at the Senate committee hearing putting their side of it. The simple matter is that uh, what we need is a clear statement from the Labor Party, certainly at the state government in Queensland and federally, uh, do they support the Adani mine going ahead or not? Uh, the only reason the federal government saying that uh, NAIF funding won't go to uh, Adani's application is because the Queensland government, thankfully, have vetoed that one. But unless they make a clear statement saying they'll veto any other uh, projects that will also assist coal developments, whether it's Adani's or other new coal mines that open up the Galilee Basin, then uh, we're just beginning to have the same uh, discussion over and over again all year and uh, that's where we need a clear position uh, from Labor about their their real position uh, on Adani and the Galilee Basin. Well you're right, Labor did seem to be uh, suggesting that it's going cold on Adani over the weekend. It comes ahead of that uh, by-election in Batman uh, which is expected shortly. Bill Shorten saying that he's becoming increasingly uncomfortable essentially with the concept of this new coal mine. Um, for our viewers who might not know, you've just run the very anti Adani campaign in Queensland in the lead up to the state election there for the Greens. If Labor does shift to a stronger position, how do you expect that would affect things in Batman? Would that steal a bit of the Greens' thunder, do you think, in that Victorian by election? Look, I'll leave Victorians and people of Batman to talk specifically about what they think the people of Batman would, how they would react. Although I would say, look, as you mentioned, going in the Queensland election and just on the eve of the Queensland election, the Labor government in Queensland, the Premier there and then the Deputy Premier, uh, both made a big show of saying they would veto Adani's application through NAIF. Um, but uh, we saw the minute after the state election was over, they're saying, oh, well, a rise in application, well, we don't know, they, we might support that, we might not, wait and see. Uh, so it was showing a pre-election thing, and this is clearly what's happening in regards to Batman. Uh, Bill Shorten's making some vague hints to suggest he might be a bit more sus about Adani. You just need a clear-cut statement. We don't need any new, more coal, new coal mines in central Queensland. There are plenty of other job opportunities there uh, in regional Queensland and existing jobs that will be harmed. Uh, by uh, having a whole new coal deposits opened up. Uh, I just spent the last couple of weeks in Rockhampton, in Mackay, in Cairns for that committee hearing, in Ingham, uh, other communities around Cairns, and there are plenty of people in regional Queensland that recognise uh, that just putting your, your hope in another cargo cult boom-bust coal mine in central Queensland is not going to deliver economically for the region, let alone the environmental harm. And there are plenty of other jobs uh, and infrastructure projects in northern Queensland uh, that do need support. Uh, we just need a, you know, this is an issue, frankly, where Labor just needs to say, or is it Queensland Labor or Bill Shorten and Federal Labor, we don't support this mine going ahead. Just stop fudging in the lead up to a new by-election. Uh, they just make a straightforward statement um, and then people can know where they actually stand on it. Well, supporters of the coal mine, as you know, uh, strongly disagree with that. They say that thousands of jobs will be, uh, will, will just disappear. Or they won't ever be created if this coal mine doesn't go ahead. Um, we know that that is an argument I'm sure <laughs> we'll be seeing play out uh, over the coming months as we get down to stronger positions from the major parties on that issue. 
I am, though, Andrew Butler, keen for your views on the citizenship saga. It's, you know, obviously dominating Canberra there again today. You are in the Senate after the, um, the Greens, Larissa Waters, obviously found herself uh, caught up with that very early on. What do you think should happen here? We're seeing Labor and the Coalition obviously fighting over the future of people like the Labor MP Susan Lamb. What do you expect how, uh, will be playing out on that front? Well, two things. What should have happened six months ago when Larissa Waters and Scott Ludlam from the Greens uh, acknowledged uh, their ineligibility and resigned uh, was that the two uh, larger parties should have agreed then to the Greens' approach to have a proper independent audit of everybody's situation and it could have been resolved back then. Uh, but that didn't happen uh, because uh, the other parties just went for their short-term political interests. Uh, and you're right. As soon as we come back here, it's on again. Well, I tell you, everywhere I went, Queensland, uh, over the last month, nobody talked about it. They want to know about what matters for their communities. And I don't care what Liberal and Labor want to do uh, in all their political positioning in the House of Representatives. They can do what they like. Uh, what I would like them to do is get back to focusing on the issues that are affecting uh, all Australians, such as growing inequality, such as insecure jobs. And those are the things people are talking about to me in Queensland. I know it's issues elsewhere around the, the country and, uh, and we want to talk about Batman uh, issues there in regards to uh, housing affordability, uh, public transport, uh, as well as uh, Labor's totally wishy-washy position on, on regards to uh, a proper future for re renewables and for not supporting uh, new coal deposits such as Adani. Green Senator Andrew Bartlett, 